Wrestling has more than one royal family. What's going on people? Alex Thorne here and it is Wrestlemania weekend and I thought there would be no more perfect time than to review the Iron Claw which focuses on the incredible Von Erich family from wrestling lore. First of all I want to thank channel subscriber Mike Stover for sending over a digital code for this movie. I've been dying to watch it we're good friends outside of here. Thank you, brother, for this. Secondly, I've been a wrestling fan since I can remember. Three years old, my very first, legitimately, my very first memory of life is walking down the street with my mother's hand in one hand and a Hulk Hogan LJN figure in the other. That's three years old. So obviously, wrestling has been in my life forever. And then, of course, from 2008 to 2013, professional wrestling was my world, my life. Everything changed overnight. So in watching this movie, I knew a lot about it and I saw a lot of things like Zac Efron's, we're going to get to, Zac Efron's performance and what he did wrestling-wise. You know what I mean? The Von Erics, along with the Rhodes that you guys see now this weekend even though there are two Von Erics today that are in the wrestling business they're largely absent which is a shame and this movie shows you and tells you why let's rewind back to the beginning Fritz Von Erich a former wrestler in the 40s and 50s really didn't make it big never could get the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. They never truly sided with them. Back then, it wasn't just the WWE or the WWF or the WCW, AEW, TNA. It wasn't just one or two or three feds. It was a territory system. And if you wanted to be recognized as the actual true World Heavyweight Champion, you had to be the NWA World Champion. As you see behind me, that NWA World Champion in the 80s when he had his kids were two people, Harley Race and Ric Flair. But back in the day, it was somebody else. And Fritz Von Erich tried to be that. And the committee that voted on the champion never voted on Fritz. So Fritz Von Erich, who understood the business to an extent, not all the way, but he understood the business that he was in to an extent obsessed over it. And once he had his clan of kids in Texas, because the brother had kids, he was knocking up his woman. Well, yeah, not like this, but you know, uh, 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 knocking up his women, his woman as much as he possibly could. Back in the day, man, this is old school. And his oldest, because there was one brother who died very young, but his oldest to the other brothers that was living at the time when they were all alive was Kevin Von Erich. And that is played by Zac Efron. The performances in this is un unbelievable. Unbelievable. Kevin Von Erich, David Von Erich, Kerry Von Erich. Mike Von Erich. Later on, there's Chris Von Erich, but he's not in the film. They decided not to include him. He uh, he was a brother that's not here anymore, too. Like we're alive. So now, David's next in line because David has the charisma to really walk the walk. Problem is, David is the first to pass away from illness. His intestines burst while he was in Japan. There's one kid named Mike. And Mike really wants to be a musician, but Mike doesn't have the wrestling bug. Mike doesn't have the physique. Mike doesn't have any of the stuff that a wrestler of the day needed. He wants to be a musician. Mom says no. Dad says no. They force him into the business. 
And what happens to Mike? Out of all things, Mike does a drop kick, lands on his shoulder, and during shoulder surgery, suffers from septic shock, goes into a coma, and is considered a disappointment widely by the father. Not being able to handle that pressure anymore, Mike takes his own life. Now, Carrie is really, when I grew up, the only Von Erich that I knew about. He was a Texas Tornado in the WWF. He got to tag team side by side with one of my heroes, the Ultimate Warrior. I loved Kerry Von Erich on screen. In fact, there were times where Kerry Von Erich looked like he could be the Ultimate Warrior without makeup. And if they think they truly wanted to, they probably could have fooled a lot of people by doing some photo shoots or maybe some house show run-ins with Kerry having Warrior's makeup on and pass him as the Warrior. That's how close to perfection he was. Kerry finally, as you see, gets the, that 10 pounds of gold around his waist. He defeats Ric Flair. He, re he achieves the dream of the father only to succumb to that pressure. Goes out on a motorcycle ride, gets into a horrible accident, loses one of his legs from the shin down. Yet again, Considered a disappointment, but you got to get up. You got to get in there. The steroid trial pops up. Him, Davy Boy Smith, Ultimate Warrior, amongst a few others, are let go from the company. Kerry can't take the pressure anymore. Comes home, takes his own life. The brother that's not in this actually passed away before Kerry. He also took his own life at 21 years old, Chris Von Erich. He's not mentioned here, but I thought I would mention it in this review. The only one left, really, is Kevin and his father, Fritz, and the mother, who I believe by the end of this movie has dementia. This movie finally concludes with Kevin finding happiness by going home and being a family man that he has wanted to be. And leaving a lot of that pressure that he felt from his father behind. But that pain will never leave. There are scenes in this movie that even though I am an only child, I fully understood the pain that this family was going through. I could not imagine if I did have brothers to lose them in succession like this one after another. I could not imagine having the pressure of a father like Fritz who never achieved his dream to push it onto his kids everybody does an amazing job. The uh, actor who played uh, Fritz von Erich did incredible. Once I got over the fact that the actor who was playing, uh, Jeremy Allen White, I believe his name was, the actor who was playing Kerry von Erich didn't really look like Kerry, and this guy was short, and Kerry was like 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 um, I, I, once I let that go, I was like, man, this guy's doing a great job. But Zac Efron, there's a scene... There's many scenes, but there's a scene at the end of that movie where he says something to his kids. And that's that I'm sad because I used to be a brother and I'm not a brother no more. And both of his kids, and I know this, I felt this. I've had my son say something similar to me for, for another reason, which is we can be your brothers. I once told my son, I was sad because I never got to have brothers. I grew up an only child, and he said, that's okay, Daddy, I'll be your brother. Kid you not. So internally, I felt that last scene, and Zac Efron and the writer and director of this movie, they did, everybody just did an amazing job. A24, this movie looked beautiful. That's another thing about this movie. It's just, I was shocked at how great it looked, and it had a, the perfect amount of grain. The color grading on this movie was just incredible this movie did it with compassion did it with style took it seriously respected the business if I could critique anything about this movie it would just be the portrayal of Ric Flair uh, was not good the I know they wanted him to cut the promo but that guy just did not cut it and then when he came into the ring he didn't look great either in the match he looked 
decent, and then afterwards he looked good. But just they, they I would have worked more on that guy's portrayal, or maybe just got another actor completely. But outside of that, there's literally nothing I can say bad about this movie. With it being WrestleMania weekend, I think I only have one choice, and that's to give the Iron Claw five bandanas out of five. This movie is off the charts. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's a, an emotional ride. And if you don't know who the Von Erics are, you are going to find out through this movie how important they were to Texas and WCCW was the territory. I mean, the Von Erics were all over the place. Women loved them. They could not go anywhere without being heartthrobs. But it is truly a tragic story. We all did. My question to you is, which Von Erich was your favorite? If you're an old school wrestling fan, were you able to ever see any of the Von Erichs live? And ultimately, who do you want to win this weekend? Is it Roman Reigns or is it Cody Rhodes? And you know what that means. It's time for WrestleMania. And I gotta go watch WrestleMania this weekend, enjoy myself with my boys, and rock out and watch some movies and review them for you. See you next week.